Is this the end to Vecna? We're going to be talking about theories of Stranger Things Season 4 going to Season 5. Spoilers up ahead. Welcome back to Azart with Nick, AC, and Random. Today we're going to be talking about awesome theories from Stranger Things. But before we go any farther, check out AC's and Random's YouTube channel. They have the Anime Collector. And it's the... What's the podcast? The, a the OCA AOC? podcast. OCA Open podcast. Chess Open chess anime podcast where they just go all anime out. If you're into anime, I highly recommend watching their channel. Go over there, subscribe, let them know you're from Azart. And just so you know, here on Azart, we cover a lot of different shows ranging from HBO Max to Westworld to Raised by Wolves. You name it. We try to cover it. And yeah, we're just going to jump into some amazing theories. All right, guys, there's some crazy theories out there on the Internet. I haven't read a lot of them. <laughs> I've been trying to stay away from them as much as possible because I don't want to be like, I don't want to be tainted by all the theories out there. I kind of want to come in as fresh as possible, but we need to talk about Max, obviously, right? Okay. Max is a big question, right? Because Max is in in empty mode. <laughs> She's sure. alive, but there's nothing up there kind of thing. So what do you guys have on Max? Is she still alive? Is Is, is Vecna in her mind? Is she in Vecta's mind? Like, what's going on? Let's hear it. So one of the things that I took away from season four is um, Brenner specifically tells Eleven uh, when Vecna kills, he takes everything, right? Mm. So um, I look at it like uh, every person that he's killed is inside of him. And when they slay Vecna... I think Max will come out of her coma. Mm. I think I I think that's what they're setting up. Okay. Just like after four seasons, it's become a little bit formulaic, and you sort of see how they think, right? Mm. That's what I think they're setting up. And random. But that's also what I hope oh. they're setting up because <laughs> Max is my favorite character in the series. Yes. And I'd be very mad if, <laughs> if she's they just in her. a coma for the rest <laughs> of the season. <laughs> so back before season four came out, there was an interview with the kids. Uh, I think it was eleven and. Dustin um, mm. and they were talking about someone asked who dies in the show and their answer was everyone now obviously that was not true but as I was watching it it uh, kind of affected me uh, while I was watching this show and so I was fully expecting the you know scorched earth ending where a significant portion of the cast dies um hmm. now max didn't die but she's in a coma but i still think hmm. well a lot of people died in hawkins um mm -hmm. and so i still think that uh they were going the end game route and i think there's a significant possibility they go the or sorry the infinity war route i guess and there's a significant possibility they go the end game route to fix the problem in season five and do time uh, time travel, especially the with upside down. Uh, I, I right? think that's yes. or, yeah. I think that's extremely likely. I, I, mm. There's there's a reason that uh, I think that they planted that the upside down is stuck in eighty three. Mm -hmm. um, and the Back to the Future reference, like throughout season three. Well, I'm yeah. I'm I'm not so sure that the the references in season three were setting up anything in season oh, four, four. Mm. but um, yeah, as possible. Uh, who knows how how, had, how far ahead they've planned these seasons? Um, so you think look, time the, time travel well, is going major... to be the solving of the problem with with Vecna? I I think so. I think that'll bring back. They went Eddie out of their way in the story and Max to drop that it's frozen in time. Yes. Yeah, they went out of their way to do that because Nancy is looking for the gun, right? And she hasn't purchased it yet in the timeline of where the date when Will um, was uh, disappeared, right? So that, like, they really went out of their way in the story for that, for the only thing that they got out of that trip basically is, oh, we learned that it's frozen in time. So I can't see, you know, Chekhov's gun. If, if it's in the, uh, if it's hanging over the fireplace in Act 1, it better be fired by Act 3. I can't see them not using it. Yeah. Hmm. Um, Do you think Eleven has the ability to mess with time in the Upside Down? Since she's the one that kind of created it, right? When the rift happened? It's implied she created it, yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I don't know that she created it or she just opened the doorway to a alternate space that existed in a realm outside of what we perceive through visible light, so to speak. But that's when, when she opened it the second time, that's when the time thing happened, right? Or, or is it because of Will? Is it connected to Will? It's it's kind of... He, he was the first character that entered. So, I was going to say... That's an interesting question, but go ahead. It's, it's kind of left ambiguous as to what the timeline was, right? Between her sending one through the portal the first time and the second mm. portal opening up in the lab. So the, when Dr. Brennan comes in to the rainbow room and finds her and he takes her uh, by herself and starts trying to train her, which happens in season one. Um, mm-hmm. And then she eventually opens. How many days was that? If it's in or years, huh? Well, I mean, it well, could be years, yeah. but if she created the upside down, then you would assume that that happened season one, that within a couple days, the, the rainbow room mm-hmm. incident and, the uh, Demogorgon por- uh, lab portal, um, those two portals opened up within mm. days of each other. If, right. if which, the- which I thought, we had talked about this previously, you and I, and I thought that that was plausible at first, but I realized afterward that the way the timeline is set up, the events that happen with one becoming Vecna um, in, in that moment where he faces off with uh, Eleven, um, that's actually at that moment, Eleven loses her, her memory of that event. Yeah. Uh, like everything that occurred. And she believes that she's the one who murdered all the kids or whatever. Um, and then there's like a whole, like maybe a month of it, at, at minimum of training between Brenner and her where she, they, um, they, they don't really give a good anchor for timing on that right so it could have been so, over but, a couple but it, days. i don't think it actually is necessary because we were sort of discussing earlier about the the demogorgon being able to open the portals like small portals well it's just so, whether or not um, the question she is created the upside down so if she created the upside yeah, yeah. down in the so, first so the question portal, is right okay then, so we're su- so the question we're having here then is did the did the upside down get created when she sent one through it or when will was pulled into it well, I mean, the upside Even, down clearly existed when she put one through it. The the question is well, the, whether or not is Hawkins, that the upside down? It's, yes. it's the time though. It's it's the her her power over time. Is it her power? Is it someone else's power? Like, well, I really hope they don't bring back the number uh, the other number eight. characters from season two, because holy hell, was that annoying? <laughs> well, what <laughs> what's interesting? Why I think Will has such a big part to play. My theories with Will is. He knew the city like Eleven didn't know right. Hawkins at all. Like, like so, I feel like so the question, it was his okay. mind that kind of scaped the landscape almost kind of thing. So, yeah. Do you think do you think that when he because remember, the, there's a enormous part of the series that's all about Will being affected by the upside down while after he's no longer in it yeah. with like the goosebumps and everything. So uh, it might be an interesting thought of did the world because we were i was just asking like is that the upside down that right. um that what's his name uh, vecna gets thrust into in the portal at the end of uh season four part one i, I and i asked that question specifically because the term upside down refers specifically to the upside down version of hawkins well and and the reason yeah. i ask is that the upside down is because i don't think it is yet when he first goes in there it's it's like formless it doesn't actually Mm -hmm. have a map so the question is when will gets brought in his familiarity with the town is that what maps it well it's possible he did spend like what two weeks in the upside down yeah at least um during the first season so while he was trying to hide from the demogorgon and stuff um, he could have been like as he's exploring the upside down his mind could have been creating um the Hawkins of uh, the upside down, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's possible. Yeah. Like the way I kind of look at it is th- what if what the Demogorgon actually did is it, it latched onto will when it grabbed him rather than consuming him. Like what if, so we were talking about how when Vecna consumes you, he consumes all of you. He takes everything from you, your powers, mm-hmm. your memories, right? All of that comes to him. So what if other creatures in the upside down have a similar ability that they don't utilize because they don't have the power to the way that um, Vecna does. But what if the what if the world 
with the hive mind and all that stuff is feeding off of um, the the victims, right? Mm. So what if it's not even Will? What if it's Barb? Well, Barb was Is after that the same Will. night or was that a couple days later? Bar- Barb was after Will. Yeah. I think it was because his day. brother was looking for Will, and that's when he was taking photos. Yeah, but the well, remember the, the, the brother assumed, was looking yeah, yeah. for Will, Will, and he was taking right. photos of what happened that night. Yeah, right. Will goes yeah. missing during the night, right? But, he doesn't arrive. But home, theoretically, and I think Barb was the very could, next day. Right, but think of the the next morning or the next night. Day? The next no, night. the next night because I think Will was after school. Yeah, Will Will See, was but, but on his way thing. home after hanging out with his, the friends and then he goes yeah. missing they wake up they're like they don't realize he's missing because mm-hmm. and then um because they were both working later late shifts um yeah. and then okay. it still makes sense though if you think about it because what she determines it's the same day that will left is the diary entry and the next night she slept with steve and stayed over at his house where she wasn't near her diary so I don't think it was the Barb same gets, night though, because I remember them no, making fun of the Will. next night. Yeah, but it's, yeah. isn't it the next night? Or not Will, his brother. I'm sorry. I no, like it at is school. Will. And you, stuff. You, they're making. They're making. Jonathan. Well, yeah, they're, yeah making they're, they're making fun, fun of Jonathan. Of Will to, to Jonathan. Like maybe they they were talking like because he was like posting up him. flyers and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like they were saying like how much you want to bet he killed him or yeah, whatever because mm-hmm. they they were outcasting yeah. him. Right. So I I don't think it was like the next night. I think it happened kind of spaced out. Maybe. Again, they don't they don't give us a good anchor, but I'm saying that theoretically, if the if the moment with Barb is literally the next night, it would still make sense that the diary entry doesn't show that date because Nancy wasn't there to write in the diary at her own house before going to bed that mm. night because she was sleeping with Steve at uh, Steve's house. And then do you think now Will is like a sleeper agent for Vecna? I think he was in season three, right? I'm just, or, I'm just like, he's, yeah, yeah. He's in still... season three, they, they, that's when they use the, uh, the sauna, mm-hmm. uh, on Billy, oh, which by the way, mm-hmm. that was, that was mind blowingly well executed <laughs> in season well, four. Cause he's still, he still has that. chills though. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, he still, yeah. He gets the, the goosebumps. Yeah. So like, like, does Vecna still have like some kind of connection to him still? He's like, you know, I'm going to let, let him think he broke the connection or something like that kind of thing. I, I don't know if it necessarily is that, you know, like he's a Manchurian candidate, so to speak, you know, like that mm. he's actually under the control because uh, they got the they got the mind flayer out of him in season three. But at the end of season one, he coughs up what becomes dart in season two. Right. And then at the end of season two, if I remember correctly, he's very uneasy going into the arcade. And then that develops, you know, I think the the camera rotates upside down and shows you the upside down form of the arcade that has mm. uh, the mind flayer. Right. Yeah. So they, they utilize it each time to build on to what the next season is going to be showcasing. Right. Um, so I think it might not necessarily be that, you know, he's a sleeper agent, so to speak, so much as it is that he's um, he spent so much time and was infected by, mm. you know, the presence in the upside down because he's the only one who's been in there for that long. Well, right? he does say um, he can feel that Vecna's still alive, right? At the end of season yeah. nine, or at the uh, end of episode nine. So there could be like a, a like a weak connection where if he ever gets close to Vecna again, Vecna could start, mm. um, you know, having some influence over him. We might see that um, where he, he kind of gets maybe hypnotized or something again. Uh, that's possible. I could see that happening. Especially Do now because think... he's because now when he's closer, he remember I think he even said something like now that I'm back in Hawkins, like it's bad. Like I forgot right. like, I the forgot how, how it was. Like you know what I mean? Like as soon as yeah. he got back in the area kind of thing. Do yeah. you, didn't they make some sort of comment about if they kill this might have been season three, but didn't they make a comment about if they kill Vecna that it could also kill Will? I, well v- Vecna wasn't a thing in season three. I know, but I'm, I'm asking, oh. I, I might be thinking of the, cause I think that was a part of the plot point of season three that they had that oh. fear that therefore they needed to, they needed to use the sauna mm. technique to burn it out of him first before they tried to kill it. Mm. The mind flayer. I, I can't remember if that was something I'm mixing up from season three or if that was something that also got brought up in yeah. season four. And I'm bridging this into my, my question, which is, do you think that Will is going to sacrifice himself to save Mike? 
And by him being killed is what's going to kill Vecna. No. <laughs> like, no. I, I only say that because I don't <laughs> think that the uh, Duffer Brothers are going to kill any of the four main characters. Yeah, I, they I, might I all survive. It's 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 like it's like the hobbits in in yeah. Lord of the Rings. <laughs> I, I just don't see the four them. the four hobbits. <laughs> I don't see them having the balls to do. That. I don't know. I mean, I watched. Uh, I, I watched think eleven Sean might off. die. <laughs> I watched Shan- Sean Astin die in season two. <laughs> you know? I think I don't I, think I, he gets the <laughs> the hobbit plot on. I think if they did I, try and kill eleven, I think eleven, 11 might die. It, I think it would. It's possible. I think it would almost echo season one too much. Like, if they ended season five with Eleven dying, then, because season one ended with what we thought was Eleven dying, right? Um, mm. And then uh, there's that, like, scene where uh, Hopper puts the egos in the woods or whatever, and right. we're like, oh, she she's probably still alive. Um, or maybe that, was that in season two? Anyway. Um, I think it was. So, I, I, I feel like if they did try and kill her, it would mimic season one too much, and there would be this like gnawing feeling of like, well, she's still alive. Right. And then because season five is going to be the last season, we'll never know. Uh, so I, I almost feel like they can't kill her now. Um, mm. So unless she's like connected to the upside down and it's like, because of her, you know, the only way to truly destroy is to have 11 destroyed. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it's, it's they important could. to acknowledge that, that we leave off the end of season four with, um, Things have progressed so significantly with the Hawkins, uh, with the gates um, splitting and and crossing all over uh, and burning the holes or whatever. The, basically, mm. the thing that they refer to as the earthquake, right, for the regular townsfolk. Um, that I, you know, it stands to reason that things are going to be so like the stakes or whatever are going to be so much higher in season five that there, you know, anything is possible. Like it's going to be very hard to, uh, to see where it's going, you know, it'd be really, um, which is again, go ahead. Good. No, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's, it's why I think that the time travel theory is the most sound Yeah. Mm. because in order to correct things, you're going to have to undo the way that it affected all these people. Right. Which by the way, a misstep I think they made in, um, in the end of season four is that you see, uh, Jason, get vaporized um after uh after the thing starts splitting from where max is Mm. after uh what's his name lucas pulls max away from it as it's splitting um i feel like they should have shown more people throughout the town Mm. you know having like catastrophic effects happening to them like the reaction of you know kid lost the mother you know like different things to to really sell um Hmm. the effect of, of just how yeah. catastrophic it, it was. It's kind of mentioned um, offhandedly. Yeah, it's mentioned, yeah. but I just feel like, I feel like, you know, across that two minutes, you could have shown, you know, four or five people or, or something, you know, theory I mean? time. You could have shown the, <laughs> the effect. Um, so yeah. I think, I think what might be cool uh, if they do do, uh, uh, which I believe they will be doing a time gap for season five is like, we, we open up to season five and like Hawkins is just destroyed. They have constant like uh, monsters coming out, kind of like Pacific Rim. And they've set mm. up like this uh, unit with the uh, military where they've surrounded Hawkins and like evacuated of people and have like a task force to deal with like random Demogorgons and shit coming out of the portals. Um, and we could even see maybe 11 trying to help close portals, like go around the area and like, as uh, um, a monster sighting happens or whatever, she, she has to go in and like use her powers to close up the portal quickly as they try and deal with the monster. Um, And that's kind of like just the like apocalyptic, like opening that they have to like work their way back from throughout the entire season um, to get back to like normal C right to fix it. But like, that's how it starts. That, I think that would be I feel cool like that opening. would get so repetitive and annoying. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's, I'm not saying like monster of the week, like whatever. I'm just saying that's the, like the opening, like the opening to like ep- episode okay. one. Like, yeah, like that's how they're going to just, just that, to show gonna, like the state. Just everything say that is, over like the, the course craziness. of the time. Yeah. Gap, yeah. This is what yeah. she's been up. That's to what, that's okay. what the world has kind of devolved into this state of uh, the military trying to hold back the monsters. 
Yeah. I, th- I think I'm, otherwise, like, fun. I don't know how else you handle the fact that this town has been split open by these massive portals for, you know, potentially months. I, I don't yeah. know how else you handle that. Well, that's the other thing. And, and this is going back to what I was saying is they should have shown a little bit of the carnage and things climbing out, like from the gates of hell, you know, or yeah. flying out. They have all those bats. Yeah, we didn't. Exactly. We didn't get any <laughs> shots of anything except for I think we got something like the, the storm. Yeah, right, the a, mind flares type story. I don't think it was yeah. mind it was like flare. A I think it was just like smoke or whatever. Yeah, but it was just something. It yeah. was it was showcasing that basically a threats coming in in the sky and on the ground. There are things that have changed that are more reminiscent of the upside down than where we were before the earthquake, yeah. quote unquote. So one yeah. other theory that I seen was well, actually speaking of, first of all, I'll go back to my Star Wars theory, right? Where yes. um. So he says – he basically uh, – one basically says the entire like join me. We'll, we will rule the world. We can recreate the world. Um, and basically the only line that he's missing is as father and son, right? Or as father <laughs> and daughter. So I think it is it is significantly possible that he is Eleven's father. Um, he mm. even says something along the lines of like – I'm so glad you were born. Um, and uh, he talks about how Brenner tried to. Um, oh, what if? Oh shit! He talks about what if all of the what if all the numbers are his kids well, or at least yeah. clones of him, right? Or no, like because because ma- specifically made in a lab from him. Yeah, but specifically, one is the reason that the program exists in general. And they put the chip or whatever in him yeah. that he said was like a tracking device, which was actually an inhibitor that stopped him from being able to go ham on everybody. Well, he- so in all the kids are like progressively aged, aged up like one year, it seems or nine months. Right. I don't, but then again, you would, you wouldn't need to necessarily, you could just use different, the donor. He seems uh, so um, young though, to DNA. have kids for those 10 years though. Don't you think? Well, or, or, clones is what i'm saying oh, yeah well, like, I, I can see like the clone thing or or something yeah. like that but so so the idea would be how old is 11 he would need to be whatever his age was when when victor creel stuff happened you take his dna and it could just be a blood you know vial of blood or whatever um to clone right and then you you progress <laughs> i'm not that an up. expert in cloning but I'm, yes. just saying, I think like, it... <laughs> I'm just saying if you take the age of 11 and add the age he was as henry creel mm. then i don't think it's that un- unrealistic i think it Except works you have to take the oldest kid yeah i think it works for 11 i don't think it works for any of the other people okay. um but mm, that's why she's so much stronger than everyone else yeah and and that's why he specifically focuses on her too right mm. he, he kind of ignores all the other people and specifically like focuses on her tries to help her become more powerful um well there's definitely something going on between him and her because if you look in the um in the rainbow room shots um there's a clock that is uh, like right at the rim of uh of an overhang um and there's the reflection of the light is crossing over from the one to the 11 in literally like every single shot that it's there oh. it's just like a happy coincidence almost with how the reflection on his hitting that it's specifically linking one and 11 in every shot. That's cool. I, I, I don't know if that was just I, supposed I, I to be foreshadowing. That. that was pretty cool. Or if there's something more than that. So then, but that was something I, I thought was so pretty what happens when, when it I strikes it. 12. <laughs> 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 um, is, is there a 12? <laughs> well, there's 17, right? It's what, uh, oh, that's Brennan, right. Brennan says at one point, like 17, get the door or 16 or something like that. So there's definitely more than 11 kids. Yeah. Um more yeah, than that that was the kid drawing the the cows or whatever, right? Uh-huh. And there was also a lot a lot of younger kids to 11. Yeah. It, it was also weird they didn't show number 7, I think it was, the the Indian girl. Cuz I think she already in her ran memory? she already re- ran think, away at that point maybe. I think she was 8. Maybe. The, well, one says that specifically at one point when he's talking about um tell, when he's telling 11 uh, you know, think of a sad, angry memory. Don't you have one of those? Wasn't there a time when a woman came right. to steal you? Mm. And that was her mom trying to get her out of the Institute. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, that's when you see her, I believe it's eight, right? Sitting in the mm-hmm. little room. I just looked it up. Also known as eight. And, um, and then in season two, it was revealed that someone took eight. And and um, one mentions that. He's like, that's when we still had eight. Um, mm. in, in the scene there, he says, like, that's when we still mm. had eight. 
Oh, okay. So that's interesting too because they made um, that connection. I, I noticed also that because um, I was looking for eight the whole time. I hope she doesn't come back. In, by the way, I do not. Oh, I hope it. so too. I hated the season two crap, uh, but uh, I did notice that on the doors um, they have the numbers for like supposedly what room the person's in. Mm. It goes like seven, nine, ten, eleven. Oh, like they actually don't even date. have a room for eight because she's not there anymore, which would make mm. sense if you guys are right that she escaped early on. Well, yeah. she she got taken that's, out. Someone took her. That's a really interesting theory, though, because that's totally Star Wars. And it's totally why she has her powers, because she's literally connect. She's like twice as good as one. That's why she's 11, right? <laughs> <laughs> literally. This is double, double one. <laughs> double ones here. <laughs> And then, okay, so I I know I mentioned Max at the beginning. If Max wakes up, does that close the the portal or the crack? Mm. If she wakes up, because she's like the door, right? She's the door to one of the ones that created the cracks. If she magically or if Eleven's able to get her mind back to her body and she's alive, will that shut the door? My guess would be no. I have a second. No, okay. Because yeah, Vecna, I, I Vecna so. says like you've already lost, um, right? To yeah. eleven. Um, so I that's think that's what every evil evil villain says, though, right? <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, <laughs> but so I think, I think the once the portals open, I think you need someone like eleven or one to specifically close it. That's that's mm. how I would think that they would handle it. Obviously, they can but do whatever it, they want. Would that but... come to bringing back Max though? If they're able to close that one by saving her, oh. is she going to come back at the I... end? Alive. Didn't they didn't they realize in the last episode of season four part two that more than one gate opened um at each kill site? Didn't they have something like didn't they notice something and, and that verbally got said at some point after um I think after the earthquake scene or right before the earthquake scene or something, they had mentioned uh they realized that there was more than one gate that was opening in the in the kill sites. I don't think so. Huh. I, don't I don't remember, remember anything that. like that. Here's a quick question. You guys got me thinking about something. <laughs> um, Max originally was attacked at a couple different areas, right? But she wasn't put into the trance state, right? Until she was at the graveyard. Well, I don't, I think that was just his process, though. I know, I know. But hear right. me. I'm I'm going somewhere with this. Every Do you every think time it she saw a vision, up his plan at all. Oh. Because because of the way that the uh, the way that the the gates opened, they were lines that crossed. Hmm. Do you think it screwed up his plan at all that they made him open the gate at the Creel house where he in the upside down is uh, connected to the hive? Like, do you think that screwed <laughs> up like, anything? It's like an open door. They just got to shoot a missile in. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's Star, Star Wars. Wars. Yeah, it's the Death yeah, Star. Drop the nuke right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Use the force. <laughs> it's an unguarded yeah. vent. Yeah. Right. We used to shoot those back in, you know, Hawkins or whatever. A little, a little rough <laughs> right there. You have some kind of new, new character. Gosh. And no, that's that's when Eleven's going to fly, right? Eleven's going to fly. That's like another theory, right? And someone's going to be on her back shooting the missile. Oh, I think oh, I think God. she basically has to fly. So, yeah, a few things. She already kind of does fly. A few things. She, remember in the... Sorry, she go flies? Ahead. She, she, yeah, well, she levitates. Li- yeah, I was going to say, literally my <laughs> least favorite scene in the whole series is the part where um, where she overpowers 11, or where she overpowers 1, and then she does the superhero landing when she's got like all the blood dripping <laughs> on her eyes and stuff, and she does the superhero landing with her hands out to the side and lands on one knee, and it's like the most staged looking thing you've ever seen. But she she kind of flies in that scenario. But I think she full because she's gonna be like Back Superman. This is her slowing around. down her descent, though, right? Yeah. But she's okay. full on gonna be flying, right? Don't you guys think they are hinting yeah, at it like no. crazy? I mean, because she could, how I don't understand how she wouldn't be able to fly because she at least carries uh, Mike when he jumps off the cliff in season one. Oh yeah, remember she, when yeah. the bullies um, the bullies are gonna break him uh, back. Dustin's mm-hmm. arm or whatever, and they force him to jump off the cliff by the quarry. Yep. Yeah, she caught. Which she, is again she him. A, a, another scene that is extremely reminiscent of it. Hmm. I don't know if you if you've seen the new mm-hmm. hit, yeah. But they it almost I it might even be the same location. 
It's definitely so, the same um, actor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is actually come to think of it. <laughs> um, so what are what are some other fun theories you guys have? Is that all you have random? Sorry, before you go into that, I just want to say there's a couple things that they left open that are still like Chekhov's gun. So one, the the time, why the time matters for the upside down. Two, Max's letters. All of them weren't open. Mm-hmm. The only one that we read was Billy's. Um, so all of the fr- uh, friends' letters and her family's letters. Um and that's going to be a big plot point probably in the next season. Yeah, I think so. And 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 11 flying. I, those those three things I think they they hinted at. I think they need to provide closure on for sure. Um and then as for other theories, though the, there is one that I seen that um on TikTok that seems like it could be pretty good and I I I it's almost almost not good that I heard it because it's so good. It's, it's one of those theories that's just like so good. It's like, if they don't do it, it's kind of sad. If they don't do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Just in case, if you guys want to click away, go for it. I'll put a time when to come back. Go ahead. <laughs> Spoil so, it for so us. The, so the theory was when they were fighting Vecna in the dungeons and dragons match with Eddie uh-huh. as the, uh, dungeon master. Um, I forget the name of the guy, but the, he's like, Oh, I thought Vecna was killed by this guy. Um, and he's like, no, Vecna lived. And then, boom, Vecna comes and, you know, they try and roll and beat Vecna. And they, uh, mm-hmm. Whatever. So that so character well, uh, from Dungeons no, and no, Dragons. Let Random finish. I want to hear this TikTok theory. <laughs> that, that character from the Dungeons and Dragons uh, game that, killed, that was supposedly killed Vecna was uh-huh. apparently Vecna's right-hand man. It, and a vampire and um i think it apparently vecna turned him into a vampire i think something like that anyway so it's highly hinted at that although it they might not go that direction that the eddie becomes a vampire he's got bats um. tattooed on his arm he got attacked by bats and we never saw his dead body you know, we think he died, but as far as we know, they left him in the Upside Down. So, so it's possible that Vecna finds him in the Upside I Down. I love that theory. Reanimates turns him. Turns him into a vampire and for a time is probably another villain or like an, uh, you know, attacking the, the main characters, an antagonist. But then throughout the season, you know, comes back to his senses and overcomes the brainwashing and then helps destroy Vecna as a vampire. That's so metal. That And that theory is so good, and I hope they do it. Um, and if they don't, I hope they do something just as good, because when I heard that theory, you know, I was like, that's a really good theory. He was such a loved character, wouldn't it surprise me? Yeah I, yeah, I I really liked the actor that played him. I thought the character, it's a... Uh, uh, Dude. A really likable character. I hope that he if comes it's back. not a, as long as it's not a Twilight vampire, <laughs> as long as he doesn't sparkle. Whoa! No, Wait a minute. Joking. Random Eleven. The jacket he wears is the Dio jacket. The vest. Yeah. The back. The back. Dio is a vampire. Yep. In JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> yep. Bringing anime into there it. There you go. <laughs> no, but and, and this, also too the all song the he things plays has just become one JoJo reference. But the, the the song he plays is Master of Puppets too, right? Which means he can be the puppet of the master too. I I think it's I don't think it's likely personally. I don't think they're going to bring him back. I think it's more likely that Erica is going to be the one to kill him just because they like to do the stuff with the uh, with the D and D game they're playing, and she's the one who kills Vecna in the. Um, in no, the it's going to be like game. Game of Thrones is going to be a knife to the back. <laughs> the Witch King. <laughs> you mean in Lord of the Rings? No, in in Game of Thrones, oh, the, right, the, right. the way well, the way they back. kill yeah. the, the way they kill the, Arya, the the Night Kings, like just the Arya, him in the neck. Arya just stabs him in the back or whatever. Yeah. Um. I, I he... no, she stabs him in the gut because she doesn't she drop the knife and then catch it. Oh, because she catches. Him, well, I'm right? just saying, but she attacks yeah. him from the back. It's like a random, like, you know, let's build up Jon Snow to kill this guy. And then it's like a sneak attack. You know, I, but, I think Eddie might not. Uh, I felt it was earned. <laughs> I, th- I think they might not give the kill to Eddie. Like they might give it to someone else, but I, I still think, I think that they, they could do Eddie. that, that story, uh, that plot point of 
of him coming back that. and just not have him kill, but help kill. Like, not be the final blow, but be on their team and help uh, take yeah, him Yeah, I wonder if all the victims will be able to, too. Everyone that's died to one. I wonder if they have a chance, like at some form of form, form of weakness, like their their souls get projected, and they're like, well, "Hold them down for the kill" or something like that, you know? Well, well I if mean, you, uh, they're all inside his you, head, right? So, right. Oh, so, so theoretically, mind theoretically, you could take the fact that they have an established relationship with so many of the people that he's taken, right? So, first question: Do you think is it possible that Vecna took Will and not a Demogorgon in season one? No, because he doesn't. Because he doesn't have the control over the portals, so there was there there were people saying like what? the picture that Jonathan takes of the Demogorgon in season one. People are like, "Oh, it's Vecna, it's Vecna." I don't think so. I think that's a Demogorgon. It doesn't make sense. He's that super Vecna... skinny, right? I mean, he's you like can barely skinny. see anything in the freaking picture. Yeah. But I I don't think uh, mm. plot wise that Vecna could have gotten into the, uh, the real world back in season mm. one. So I, I don't so, think that could. Yeah, have been. but but do you think do you think because he's the sort of master of puppets that he intentionally like that it he was pulling the strings back then with the Demogorgon to bring Will. Oh, I, think I don't know he's if he was strong enough then to. I, I think he's oh. definitely telling the the Demogorgon like to go into the real world. I I think he's yeah. he's a general, right? So he's con, you know in charge of the armies. He's not the front line guy. So I have a twist on your theory about Eddie, the school counselor. Do you think that, do you think she was working? No. Do you think she was working with Vecna? Because um, she has a pendant that has a clock on it. (laughs) She was like, yeah, she has, she has like a key or something that has like, it's a golden necklace that has like a, like a, oh. a clock face on the top. I mean, well, it would make sense, right? Because all, all of the victims were all like of her the patients. All were, yeah. Like or her, not her or, patients, or, but her students or whatever. Or do you think that she was captured in the same way that Billy was in uh, season three? By the mind flare. By the mind flare. And that she's just still under the control, so to speak. And she's, you know, like mm. you were asking about, is Will the agent inside sort of thing? Maybe it's, maybe Multiple that's what's people. going on with her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's an interesting point. No, it was really interesting. So think, okay, so you got me thinking about the Dungeons and Dragons thing. The painting that Will painted, is that some kind of future thing too then? Oh, first of all, like, I, I love the fact that when they showed up at the airport, he just like, he's like, oh, I got this painting for you. And then he doesn't <laughs> give it to him. And then he just folds it in half. Like he, he, he it's rolled into a cylinder, right? And then he just like yeah. crunkles it. And then the next time we show it, it's not like wrinkled or anything. I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's like perfectly well, crisp. <laughs> do you think that there's more than one painting? Well, he, oh, I don't like, think he brought more than one painting, no. I know, but do you think that he, ha- okay, so. Oh, you think like he's painting visions that he's have he's having through No, I, I just, no. I, <laughs> I think it was pretty clear what the showrunners were trying to do with the painting scene. Because he's basically talking to Mike as a, uh, what do you call it? Like a pseudo 11, right? He's, he's conveying his emotions to Mike, but, but hiding them behind 11 as, as the veil to, to not actually have to come out and, and mm. out him. Everyone right? knows not... though. Everyone knows <laughs> at this point. It's well, yeah, I mean, I'll just say terrorist. I didn't buy it at all at first. And then I, uh, like I said, I, I rewatched, um, or at least I listened to in my AirPods when I was at work, seasons one through three. Mm. And there are actually a lot of references to yeah. Will being gay. His dad, right? Yeah. His dad, mm-hmm. the the school bully, which I wrote off at first because I'm like, of course the bully's using yeah. uh, slurs to in the 80s. insult him. Um, but uh, Joyce at one point uh, mentions it. Um, Mike mentions something where he says, it's not my fault that you don't like girls or something like that. But in the moment, and I think still could be read as, um, you're not interested in girls while the rest of us are growing up from where we used to be interested in D and D. Now we're interested in mm. procreating. <laughs> um, so I think that, um, I, I think it's possible that the paintings that he's doing is that he is, that is, he's, uh, let's say, um, emotionally, that is the language he can speak is mm. to 
put it into a um, fantasy setting and use analogy and allegory or whatever to explain things mm. to the person that he's trouble ha- having trouble talking to. So that's why I'm asking you, you think there's more than one painting because he's had eight months or so of wrestling with his feelings mm. and um, de- developing all sorts of different paintings. And this was the one in the moment where he's like, I can use this to convey my feelings and explain the things that Mike needs to hear right now about being the heart and all that stuff. So mm. this is the one I take out of the two. Well, do you believe him more. that 11 was the one that told him basically what to paint? No. In fact, we know that that's not the case because in the letters in the first um, part of the of the series uh, for part, uh, part four, I remember her telling Mike that uh, Will is painting uh, some pic- like he he's all he's doing is in his room painting and like he's he's not giving her any info like she she commented on it in a way where um, it's weird that I actually specifically remember this, but um she the way that she phrased it, um, it's clear that she doesn't know what he's doing mm. versus, you know, a hint like I have something planned for you, but I'm going to pretend like I don't know. Like it very much comes across like she has no idea what he's doing, but he's up to something. Right. And then, of course, the way that we experience it um, for the first part of of um, of season four is that he brings it with it is so important to him that he brings it with him to the airport. Right. And he has a speech planned for the one that he's got in the tube to give him at the airport. But um, Mike completely blows him off to be with L right uh, at that point. So yeah. um, I think I just personally, I think that there's more than just the one singular painting because they specifically mm. went out of their way to talk about him like painting being holed lot. up in his room, painting a lot. Yeah. Mm. And I just don't think he took eight months to paint just the thing that we saw uh, in that last episode. Well, I think because he- I, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. There, Random, you're there, good. There definitely could be more paintings that he's been painting throughout because he even in season one he was a good uh, crayon Artist. drawer or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. So, but it's it's whether or not they'll have any impact on the plot. And so it, the, the the question I have is why would as a story creator or a story writer you say, well, this painting that Will made that we never referenced in season four is now going to be of some plot reference plot relevance when it just could have as easily been something that got created in the time gap between season four and season five or in season five itself. Like nothing says that Will mm. can't create a new painting if they need to make some right. thing with some painting. So I, I don't so know if there was quick. any existing painting that oh, okay. would become plot relevant. Cause, Cause it was like a three headed monster, right? The, right. The and painting, I think yeah. that was the toy they used in the first episode. Uh, wasn't like for, yeah, the, I think the, so. for the Demogorgon. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for for the Demogorgon. Yeah. So I didn't I didn't know if that was like oh, is there this monster that we've been not like? Is there something even bigger than the mind flare and stuff that's well, out there? How many Demogorgons is, is there have a bigger we seen? Bad? We I think we've seen at least two because I don't think the one that was in Russia. Um, I th- I think that one was smaller than the one that we saw in the first season, but I might just be thinking that because in the first season we saw a bunch of kids facing it, and in this season we saw a Hopper face it right so i mean but maybe- real quick i just want to mention um regarding the 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 thing about will being gay um he also in the in the beginning of season four um when 11 brings in the the diorama of the uh like who, who oh, her hero yeah. was mm-hmm. um his diorama thing was on alan turing uh <laughs> who was famously persecuted for being gay there you go so i think i think there might be something there i think well. we're pretty I, clear I been, that he's gay yeah, yeah. I I don't think it could get uh, <laughs> I don't think it could get any more clear. <laughs> um, but so there there's definitely been two demogorgons. I can't remember if there was ever a third one. So there've been a handful of dem the demo dogs. Yeah, the demo dogs. There's been a bunch for sure. Um, but it, if I'd have to go back and rewatch now and thinking about it, but if there are have only been two, there is and with the um the dragon the three-headed dragon thing being mm. a, a symbol for the demogorgon there may be only three and that might become plot relevant too in in the season five where there is one more demogorgon and mm. they have to kill that one um and i don't know what they could do with it but somehow being plot relevant that there were three of them I don't know if you guys played my- Minecraft, but what happens when you have three heads and you put them on Sands of Soul? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You can summon a bigger monster. No, I'm just kidding. No. 
but no it's very i just thought that was interesting because why why show us this painting other i'm i'm trying to go deeper than him showing them all fighting the bad guy kind of thing it's just like the every time they play dungeons and dragon it has to do along with the story plot so i was just like what about a painting and stuff like that i just wanted to get all the theories out here as much as possible is there any other crazy theories you guys have to throw at the wall to see if it sticks um i've got a theory that i was surprised didn't come true at part two (laughs) what was the theory (laughs) uh well you remember in in the beginning of uh season four when um when robin and nancy start um hitting it off a little bit or whatever Mm -hmm. and uh she like raids her room um and like she just commenting on like oh tom cruise poster yeah. and all those things um i thought that um when uh when she was coming out of the uh you know the layer of um vecna mm. that it was going to be robin who knew the song to play oh uh, but that just kind of fizzled like that, that didn't go anywhere yeah because he so i was expecting that and it, it didn't happen yeah because he just wanted her to relay the message well i For guess no reason technically apparently. like I guess it wouldn't have paid off to kill her because she wasn't in the real world at the time. I don't know if a portal would have been created. Was she in the Upside Down at the time? Mm-hmm. Is that how? Yeah, remember? Oh, I guess maybe. She, she was in the up, up, Upside Down with Steve. Well, they should have just thrown Max in the Upside Down. <laughs> well, they wanted they wanted him to attack her so that he would be in the vulnerable state, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I think... Uh, I don't know if it's going to be through uh, like an end game, going back in time, resetting everything to back to day one or or what. But I think we are seeing Barb season five. What? I Barb's think, back? I think Barb <laughs> is think coming the, back somehow. time travel? Somehow, either through, through the pool. Through time I've, travel. I've been thinking she was going to come back since season one. <laughs> somehow, they're bringing Barb back for season five. That's, I'm putting that down. The problem on paper. is she's gonna be way too old. We're not even gonna recognize her anymore. Right? <laughs> Deep a, fake technology. I mean, yeah, they did. They did it with eleven. They made eleven look, you know, tiny again. That was actually, I think, my my all time favorite effect they've done in the show so far was the deep fake on Eleven mm-hmm. to show her as a kid in the reflection. Oh, mm-hmm. that, that was, was cool hands shot. down my favorite thing they've done visually speaking in the show. Yeah. Um, because it made me forgive the fact that she's so old for all the re- recreation scenes in, mm. in the uh, rainbow room um, because she's so big and it's like, I, I wouldn't have been able to get through it, but I feel like it actually did more for the experience of seeing her as an adult with you know, the acting ability to convey things than just have some kid yeah. actor who we haven't spent all this time with in the last, mm-hmm. you know, couple hours uh, and have to see her as, you know, yeah, every time you see a flashback to some, like what happened to some character as a kid, it, it kind of feels like you're not really connecting with them. Like, even though I thought the kid that they got to play young Max, I could believe in that world that she grew up to be Sadie Sink's character of Max, mm. um, I still didn't feel like I was watching the same person and I lost the connection, you know? So I thought that was actually really, um, whether intentional or just how they were able to do less visual effects, doing the thing with the mirror, I thought um, connected me to those scenes on a level that was far beyond what would have happened had they actually done the whole thing with young 11 sized you know, deep fakes for all of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. As far as, um, as far as other theories, I don't have anything. I mean, there's things I want to see happen, <laughs> but I, I don't know that I would call them theories because they don't, they're not necessarily. You know Do you think the adults are going to finally fight with the kids together in the final? Cause I feel like they're always separate. I think it's, it's like the kids are separate. here. The adults are there. Yeah. You know, I that's think like the own storyline. I think thematically they have to stay separate. I think that um, thematically, I think they need to stay separate because it's it's mm. it is still at the end of the day like a coming of age story. So you need to put the parents to the side mm. and let the kids grow mm. up on their own, more or less. But I do think that with if if they do go the route of like season five is like apocalypse, you know times. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think we could see the parents being put in situations where they have to kind of fight the monsters that are coming into the real world by themselves where they're put into a situation where they're on their own as the parents, like the parent group are on their own and they have to kind of come up with their own little plan on how to beat Mm. some 
small monster or something and get to safety. Uh, I could see that happening. But I don't think generally that they'll team up with the kids or stay in mm. contact with the kids for the majority of the season. You guys have heard it here. Theories, theories, theories. If you guys enjoyed this and if you guys want to hear more from the anime collectors, go over to their channel where they have the OAC podcast. OCA. OCA o- podcast. Open chest anime. <laughs> open chest anime <laughs> podcast. It's a long podcast where they just, is it more theorizing or is it just more breakdowns or just anime It is whatever anime the hell we feel like week to week. <laughs> exactly. So go there if you guys want to hear it. They, they talk for four plus hours, right? I would say. On average. That's, that's a low average for us. That's a low <laughs> average. But I mean, if you guys like long discussions on anime topics and movies, and you guys talk about other stuff too, right? Then- yeah. Well, we talk about like industry stuff. Like, mm-hmm. you know, for example, um, we talk about recently there are a bunch of layoffs at, at Netflix and you know what that's going to mean for, for content being created and all that kind of stuff. You know, just whatever, whatever's going on in the industry, we're sort of at least talking about it and, um, talk about where we think things are going and being wrong all the time. Uh, but that's part of the fun, right? Yes. Yeah, so guys go over there, subscribe, let them know you came from as art and just let them know how awesome they are. They did an amazing job here with the theories. I hope you guys liked it. Please let us know your best theories down in the comments below. If you agree with us, if you disagree with us, if you think we're just filled with hot air, let us know. Cause it's theory time and anything goes. And you can go to azart.space for all the audio and video links and check us out on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we'll see you on the next Azart. Ow! Gosh, that was long. I don't know how you guys do it. I don't know how you guys do it for four hours. Yeah.